know what it is, people. Boss here. It's been one climactic, dramatic, superb, stupendous, sadful, sorrowful, drama filled, tragedy filled, wonderful, God like, devil visited trip back home. I promise. I promise. And if you were in the immediate circle of where I was and where I've been for the past couple of weeks, then you probably experienced most of it. And I thank every and anybody who was well wishing, everybody who gave sincere prayer and thought to what was going on with, uh, with my people. And it all felt necessary. None of it felt wasted. So I'm going to say everything we did and everything what you shared with us helped God benefit us in the ways we needed and comforted us in the ways that only he could. I promise you that. I promise you that. Because through it all, um, you know, you just... You just still find thanks in everything that he provides, even though when he gives, there are times he takes it away. And those things he takes away are just a part of the majesty of what he has in store. It brings you full circle sometimes having had loss. You know, it gets you back to where you need to be sometimes when you encounter blessings that come in the form of something being taken away. You know, it could be something as deadly or as dramatizing as alcohol or smoking or drug addiction or opiate addiction or it could be something as um, even more heartbreaking as a, as a loved one you know possibly more than one loved one it, it happens that happens but the loss brings forth the gain of the focus sometimes it's just the focus you know God when God gets your focus he got oh he got all the pieces he knows exactly how much you care about the things in your life. And if you care about something too much, absolutely. He will redirect your vision back to him by removing that thing or removing that person. Oh, yeah. He's way more jealous than your baby mama. Yeah, God way more jealous than your baby mama. And it ain't about them damn tithes either. It's about the attention and the focus that should be at the head of everything you do. And when it's not... And you keep stumbling, you keep falling. It's like, okay, she can't get her damn mind off the little Derek so damn bad. Let me, you do, gotta do something to little Derek. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, nothing and no one on this earth should matter or mean more, should matter or mean more than your Lord and Savior. You don't want to find that out the hard way. You sure don't. You know, I was talking to uh, talking to my boy. He is still young. He's in school. They're doing uh, practices and stuff like that for a pot, for a potentially non upcoming football season. And he said they was out there because it was in a public area. There was somebody who wanted to come out there and practice with them. Somebody who had graduated long time ago, gone on, and should be probably with his kids doing Sunday school or Bible study or something. But no, he out there with the little kid. And I said, uh, yeah, that's one of them glory boys that didn't do what they should have done. Wish they had done what they could have done. And now I want to come back and reclaim glory in front of you, you know, tell you about all the stats and records they broke back in the 80s. Man, look here. Let me talk to you for a second. You ask, you're a real piece of work to come out here and try to impress juniors and seniors and you damn near a senior in life your damn self get on about your business get on about and when I say that I mean this after a certain age there's certain things you just can't say anymore or it's going to sound funny to certain people when you do say it because it's not it's not brandishing the ownership in that your situation is what it is we don't need to hear your excuses of, of why it's not. 
when it's not done right and it's not done correctly or it's not done at all, nobody wants to hear your excuses as to why it's not. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you what I'm saying. <laughs> when somebody say, <laughs> when you say, uh, yeah, man, we're going to uh, do a cruise next year. We're going to do a cruise next year, and all you got to do is put $50 up today, and then you got 364 days from now to pay on it. Oh, man, I can't do that. Why not? I ain't got $50. Ooh. 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 You didn't say I'll get it. You ain't say I'll borrow it from somebody. You ain't say I'll get it. I'll have it next week. You just automatically opt out of being able to provide $50. And if you're a grown-ass person, I, boy, that's, that's, that's like unattractive. That's just like admitting that, you know, you don't have real hair or real eyelashes or real, <laughs> you know, you're just like automatically admitting the fact that you don't have responsibilities in place to do stuff like go on cruises, take trips. You know what I'm saying? Go go to a nice restaurant. Oh, yeah, we about to go and eat. Where y'all going? Oh, we're going to go over here to uh, Chart House. Ooh, they getting kind of pricey, ain't it? Oop, sorry I mentioned that to you. Sorry I mentioned that to you. You know? <laughs> when I see nice places that my that my folk be at and they be eating at like Kirby and Tosca Collins, they out there at Algiers, you know what I'm saying? They at the jerk store, places like that. You know, it's like, oh, I would love to go there. I'm in Chi Town, I gotta keep that in mind. I gotta remember to ask them where they went when they No. When you talk about including people and they don't have their priorities in order. They say unattractive things, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, man, shit, what time the game start? I don't know, about 7.30. Shit, I'm going to need a ride. Ooh! Ooh. That's quite, that's quite a conundrum you have. You don't have a fucking, you can't go because you don't have a ride? No, we don't say stuff like that anymore. We don't say stuff like that anymore. Because as you grow, grow older, certain things are just supposed to be a part of your adult capabilities. And if you don't have them and you don't get them, it all sounds like excuses to people who work to have them and still do have them. You know, and they're just being polite when they ask you and offer you things like that. They're not trying to, you know, make it known that you can't fucking go to a nice restaurant. They're not trying to put you on front street because you can't go where any and everybody else can go. Or what you can do is limited to like a certain area or a smaller area. Nobody's trying to do that. It's just a matter of get your shit together, man. Get focused. You know, you're a real piece of work. Let me talk to you for a second. Older people ain't necessarily grown people. Having the age doesn't necessarily give you the wisdom to be established at your at your age. And it really does. It just age ain't gonna stop you can't stop being older but damn it you can be better you can be better you know so some people attribute one to the other like damn you shouldn't be going back to jail for not not for that not no more not no no you lost the last time dude dude it's time to pick up a trade or a book you know what i'm saying get some rosetta stone try another language because shit, you fucking it up in english you fucking it up in english you know what I mean? Real talk. Real talk. My grown people, my grown women and men and, you know, couples, you know, growing together. Amen. Yeah. It's even worse when it's a couple because you feel that one don't, the other one can. And if the other one can't, then the other one can. But together, you're both failing. Separate. Separate. One of the twin powers, deactivate. Go in separate directions. Because together, you do nothing. And you don't make for a good fit. You know, I got international travel to do, so I won't see you all for some time. But may my words live on, and may God's blessings be attributed to you and yours.